Today, more than ever, there is quite a lot of talk about renewable technology for one reason or another. With lots of different studies looking for new ideas or new ways to generate energy without really using any fossil fuels. And though we've discussed some of them in some of the videos you can find in the description, today we're going to be talking about one of the more promising ones. The concept of using hydrogen fuel. Something that, at least in theory, can actually be used in aviation, is already used in a lot of cars but can actually be used in all of the cars, and at least in theory, can completely replace our reliance on fossil fuels, assuming we can find a way to effectively produce lots and lots of hydrogen using some of the modern techniques. And in this video I actually wanted to focus on some of the new advances, and actually some really exciting advances, that are slowly taking us a step closer to using hydrogen as one of the main sources of energy. The fuel that in theory could be carbon free. But not yet. And that's because of the way that hydrogen is currently produced. The vast majority of hydrogen we have right now, and here we're talking about the one that's used for industrial reasons, is produced through the technique known as steam reforming which actually requires methane gas, which is quite a potent greenhouse gas, and is not a particularly environmentally friendly technique. About 49% of hydrogen is produced this way, with 29% being produced through the use of oil, and 17% through the use of coal. But only 4% is produced without the use of any fossil fuels, usually using the process known as electrolysis. And that's a very simple reaction where, if you pass electricity through water, it ends up creating hydrogen and oxygen. And that's the ultimate reaction that you want to have in order to create hydrogen that's basically clean. But most of the hydrogen, including the one used in cars, is usually what's known as grey hydrogen. It's a byproduct of various industrial processes, with so-called blue hydrogen usually produced in a way where it also releases carbon dioxide. But the main goal of modern studies is green hydrogen, finding a way to generate a lot of hydrogen on the cheap and usually by involving some really incredible techniques but normally still using that electrolysis process that seems to be very effective and seems to produce nothing else except for hydrogen and oxygen. And the simplicity of this electrolysis reaction is exactly why hydrogen is seen as the perfect fuel. So for example, in a typical hydrogen bus or hydrogen car, all you have to do is introduce oxygen into the car in order to create energy. But unfortunately, even today, the green hydrogen is still pretty expensive to produce. But now, this year, in 2022, we had several studies that might have discovered some really incredible techniques, potentially finding ways to produce a lot of hydrogen on the cheap, and also with the extreme efficiency that was previously unavailable. And the first such study is from where I live, right here in South Korea. The study is, as always, in the description below. Now, normally one of the main problems in electrolysis is the use of very expensive metals in order to create effective reaction. But in this case, the scientists discovered that by using silk and then using what's known as carbonization, or basically covering the silk in carbon at 950 degrees Celsius, it starts to create very unusual features on the inside, which ends up producing an extremely effective electrolysis surface, able to produce approximately 20 times more hydrogen than the most expensive metal used, platinum. And so by using textiles instead of expensive metals, this will not just decrease the costs, but will also produce a lot more hydrogen using more efficient means. Moreover, this technique was actually able to produce this using relatively high current, which means that if this is industrialized, it can actually reach prices that would be much lower than most of the other fuels produced using other methods. So that's just the first such discovery. This hasn't really been confirmed by other studies yet, but still a pretty exciting discovery. But a lot of modern facilities usually use some kind of a metal and will probably still need to use very similar techniques. They can't just switch over to a completely new device. And that's essentially what this new study is about as well. It actually finds a way to use some of the recycled aluminium and gallium that can be arranged in just the right way to create an extremely efficient reaction that also seems to work at room temperature and even does not require a lot of power to produce all of the bubbles that basically produce hydrogen. But more importantly, unlike other techniques that usually require pure water or basically distilled water, this technique works with any water, even ocean water. But all of this is based on a very specific composition or actually a very specific arrangement of aluminium nanoparticles inside a matrix of gallium as you see in this microscope picture. And so even though this particular reaction has been known for a very long time, in this case the researchers actually found a perfect structure and a perfect mix to make this reaction extremely efficient. It's basically using a 3 to 1 gallium aluminium composite, which prevents the oxidation of aluminium, which can normally stop the reaction, 
and ends up producing a lot of hydrogen in normal pressure and normal room conditions. In other words, you just need to have some water and some of this compound to produce the hydrogen. It wouldn't require any kind of a massive facility to make this happen. With only one major issue here, gallium. Aluminium is really easy to get, but gallium can only really be found in certain recycled products and is generally a lot more expensive as well. And so once it becomes easier to source this particular material, this technique can also become extremely efficient at producing a lot of hydrogen. But I think it's that last paper that I wanted to discuss that seems to be the most exciting and seems to be the most promising. Producing hydrogen from the air. And moreover, the device that you see right here was able to do all of this by using nothing but the moisture from the air with the energy itself supplied from the solar panels that you see attached on the top. And in this case, the principle is really simple. There's a lot of moisture in the air. And so by capturing some of this moisture and applying electrolysis to it, in theory, it could be possible to produce hydrogen. This is known as direct air electrolysis. And in this case, their device is even able to operate in very low moisture conditions of just 4%. With the sponge-like material, specifically a melamine sponge, absorbing the water from the air and also being a source of electrolytes with the energy then splitting the water and creating hydrogen and oxygen that can be captured for further use. Now this obviously still requires some energy, but it clearly worked well because they were able to run this for approximately 12 days with five separate electrolyzers working in parallel. And so as a Star Wars fan, I can only wait for actual moisture farms to become a reality because that's exactly what they're doing here. They're capturing moisture using a relatively similar principle, although in this case, the water then produces the gas, which can be stored for further use in cars, vehicles, and airplanes. Oh, and don't forget the rockets. They also use hydrogen and oxygen mixture. Making this one of the more exciting discoveries or techniques, with at least one of these discoveries potentially leading to an explosion of various hydrogen-producing plants, slowly leading us away from the fossil fuels toward a slightly more environmentally friendly age. And if we don't find a solution to our fossil fuel problem, well, I guess you can say goodbye to airplane flight. Which I actually thought about one day while flying in the air, and it made me realize that maybe when I have grandkids, they might not even know what an airplane is. Because there might be no fossil fuels or alternative fuels able to power them. Which made me sad for two reasons. I would like to travel in airplanes even when I'm older, and I guess I also realize that I'm going to get older and have grandkids. Anyway. So it looks like hydrogen fuel is once again one of the most promising fuels that we could possibly replace fossil fuels with. But unfortunately all of this is still in the prototype stage. Hopefully one of the bigger companies picks this up and turns it into an actual production facility, but for now they definitely haven't. As a matter of fact, the only large facility I know of that produces a lot of hydrogen specifically for the use in various, for example, cars or vehicles, is this one right here in Fukushima, known as Fukushima Hydrogen Energy Research Field. As you can see, it produces quite a lot of hydrogen using solar panels, and all this is entirely green. And because this facility only opened up in 2020, I'm hoping more countries join in and build more of these around the world. So definitely something to maybe copy from Japan right here. And so, until future discoveries, or until someone actually does build a Star Wars themed moisture farm that produces hydrogen, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. You can find more videos on the idea of innovation in the field of energy in the description below. Subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.